What happened in Uvalde is absolutely horrible. It's horrendous, it's heartbreaking. And thinking about these children being slaughtered, yeah, it's, it's so bad. Thinking about the children that survived, that had to go through that, that's something I don't think that, I think that's something that will stay with them for the rest of their lives. Absolutely, understandably. I'm not going to say that people's reaction, especially there's people that aren't fond of guns and don't think that people in general public should have guns, their reactions on Tuesday night, Wednesday, that we got to do something. I'm not saying they're bad people. I get where they're coming from. That, like, once this happens, once you see this happen, the wanting for this not to happen again is a thousand percent justified. Wanting for some action to be taken to stop this from happening is a thousand percent justified. I get it. There's some who disagree on whether that action is going to get the desired result. But I'm not mad that they're saying it. Like, I'm not saying there's a a, a certain period of time that they have to wait before they actually start saying, do something. No, no. If there's a way to solve a problem, don't wait. But I think we have to have these discussions openly, honestly. If we're going to discuss people thinking that, okay, we'll be safer, if if guns are banned or if a so-called assault weapons are banned, if people believe that, okay, let's have that discussion. People that believe that, people that believe, no. If more people have guns, if people are trained and know how to handle their firearms, that will act as a barrier. That will, that will one, act as a deterrent to many individuals because many individuals, they'll say, don't, don't want to engage with somebody else with a gun uh, or a good guy with a gun but they will pick soft targets. They'll, like the Buffalo shooter said, I went to a place where I knew there wasn't guns. He knew one guy has a gun and he intentionally said, I, I know I have to take this guy out quick. I gotta take this guy out quick. But he knew it was New York State. He knew the, the strict gun laws. And he says, okay, I should be able to wreak the most amount of havoc without significant pushback in this location. He specifically said that. And just you can look around, there's people that commit crimes every day that have the same mentality. They have guns, you don't, they feel better. They don't want to go toe-to-toe a lot of times with somebody who has a gun. But this is discussions we need to have. The really amazing thing is that more information has come out about Uvalde. More information has come out about what actually happened. Because we originally thought this guy just goes to the school, start shooting, cops get there, run in there as, as quick as possible, take him down. But by the time they take him down, he's already slaughtered 21 people and 19 of them are children. That's not what happened. That is not what happened. That's so far from what happened because then we hear, oh, his grandmother's dead. Wait, well, his grandmother was shot. What happened to his grandmother? He shot his grandmother before and then was on the run. So it's like, okay, wait a minute. Like how quick, how soon between him shooting his grandmother and him getting to school, like was there no time to stop him? We we'll find out he crashed, gets out of his car and is shooting along the way to the school. So at this point, I'm wondering, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. That seems like now I'm starting to see that there's more time for law enforcement to intervene and stop him from getting to the school. That we hear reports that there was a school resource officer who engaged him outside of the school, but was unsuccessful in stopping him. And he got inside the school and and then murdered a bunch of people. And then we find out that didn't happen either. And that that information had come from law enforcement. So now we found out that there was no school armed school resource officer that engaged him outside the school. But then we get the timetable. Then we get the timeline. And the timeline is Over an hour passed before cops stopped him. Because when they talked about Border Patrol stopping him, I'm like, Border Patrol? 
I, I was like, wow, I'm, I'm, like Border Patrol just happens to be in the area to be the first ones on the scene and stop him quickly? No, because that didn't make sense. It, I, I was like, I didn't know. It, 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 it was something that, that made me think. I was like, wow, how, like, where does Border Patrol, like, I assumed Border Patrol would be at the border. I didn't think they would just be patrolling around the town. So the fact that Border Patrol uh, officers were the ones that actually took him down, I was like, wow, these guys must be really good. They must have just happened to be in the area looking for, I don't know what they were doing in the area, but they just happened to be there. They were able to stop him. That's not why they, they were the ones to do it. Apparently, they were the ones to do it because the other cops didn't do it. Other cops were just, what it sounds like, they were afraid to go in. Sounds like the other cops dropped the ball Drop the ball doesn't even begin to describe what the other cops appear to have done. But as more and more of this is coming out, people are talking about it. And I'm like, let's have the discussion. And let's not have the discussion with, in terms of, I told you so. Let's have the discussion in terms of processing this information and seeing how it relates to, to safety going forward. So I've seen people like the LaFranco talk about this. I just finished watching the Young Turks talk about this because the Young Turks actually have a, a, a video talking about how these cops are cowards. And I'm like, I appreciate them for being able to deal with the topic because we've got to talk about the truth. We've got to tell the truth about what actually happened. And they go in. They, they're going in on how these cops and Anna Kasparian, you know, breaks it down how at like 1240, well, like 1143 or something, I think, that the school says they're, they're locked down, but they're safe. And then by, there's still shots happening at 12.52. There's still shots being heard from inside the school. And it's like, what the hell? What the hell? And then these now, because now the question is, hey, did y'all just sit back there and wait? And could y'all have saved a bunch of kids' lives had you just done your jobs? But what Anna Kasparian then says... This is like I said, the same thing I heard Phil DeFranco say. And when Phil, Fra when Phil DeFranco said it, I was like, huh. Because I don't want to assume that people are being disingenuous. I just, I, I didn't understand how he got from point A to point Q where he ended up. It, 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 it didn't seem to, to click. And so I saw Eric Kasparian do the same thing. And I'm like, is this accidental? Are people making this lapse, this, this leap of logic, I guess you will call it, accidentally? Like, are they making, is this like emotions not allowing them to filter the information rationally? Because what she does is she says, so what, what's up with conservatives? What's up with, with, with your theory? What's up, your, your answer is always more, more people with guns. And then here we see, you know, you'll say there should be a good guy with gun that will stop the bad guy with gun. But here you have good guys with guns that didn't stop the bad guy with guns. And I'm like, are you being serious? Are you for real? Okay, so you may say, she's right. They're, they're supposed to be the good guys with guns. And I'll say, are conservatives arguing that cops shouldn't be stripped of guns? Because my question is, are liberals arguing that cops should be stripped of guns? Are liberals arguing that? Is Are Democrats, are people on the left, are anti, you know, people that are in favor of common sense gun reform, common sense gun laws, are they arguing that the cops shouldn't have guns? Because they're not. So the good guys with the gun that we're talking about can't be law enforcement because both the left and the right agree that the cops should have guns. So both the Republicans and the Democrats believe that the cops should have guns. I'm saying if the, the right is talking about good guys with the, should be allowed to keep guns, they can't be talking about law enforcement because the left isn't talking about disarming law enforcement. The left is talking about disarming civilians. So when the right is talking about good guys with guns, they got to be talking about civilians. But Let's not even talk about what the right is talking about. Let's take this from the left's perspective. Let's, let's, take, let's do the logical progression of what the left is talking about. Okay, let's strip all citizens, all civilians of guns, all guns. Okay? Now only law enforcement have guns. Now only the police have guns. That incident happens. 
Now, the only people that in the left scenario that should have guns have guns and aren't doing anything with them. Do you see how that doesn't make us any safer? If the people that the left believe should have guns, because the left believe that law enforcement should have guns, but should be the only ones to have guns, or at least certain types of guns, they should be the ones that have the guns. If they're not doing their job, that's actually making the argument that the rest of us can't depend on law enforcement to protect us. That's what this, that's what this definitively proves. This definitively, this definitively demonstrates that citizens cannot depend on the government to protect us. It's not the first time this happened. This dude, Scott Peterson from, from Broward, from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, he still has to go on trial. And as I was reading about the case, there's, there's more things, more elements to the case that I don't even remember them talking about. Like a, a security officer that let the shooter walk through. Didn't stop him. So it doesn't make any sense for the left to be trying to use this as a way. But like, quite, quite, quite frankly, I'm not, I don't, I would suggest the right not use this to dunk on the left. This isn't about dunking on anybody. This is about protecting people's lives. That's what it should be about. And the point is, if law enforcement is demonstrating that there are people who are wearing the badges, who are wearing the uniforms, that are too scared to actually go do the job. Because there's, listen, there are a bunch of cases when these guys in uniforms go in there and put in work. They go in there and put in work, they get the job done. I'm not. They go in there and put in work, they get the job done. Like, 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 geez, like these dudes handle their business. These dudes and women handle their business. They go in there, just not even a thought. Just, just air, air out the, who, who needs to be aired out and, and protect a bunch of people. But we're seeing that not everybody who has the uniform, who has a badge, is going to do what needs to be done. Not everybody that wears a uniform, wears a badge, has the, the uniform does not automatically give people courage. Does not automatically give people confidence and bravery. Ultimately, if we want to protect ourselves, we're going to have to protect ourselves. And so... Like I said, I'm not saying this to dunk on people, but I'm really trying to understand how people on the left are using this to, to support their, their argument. Because the left believes that law enforcement should have guns. And if the left had their way, then this still goes down exactly as, as the left proposed. The law enforcement has guns and are too scared to go inside to save lives. Whereas, if some people say, that teachers should be allowed to have guns. Maybe you have some teachers in there that are willing to go balls to the wall and stop this scumbag before he kills any kids. I get that the, the, the people say, oh, well, then we have to worry about teachers misusing the guns and teachers. Like I saw one guy post how, you know, teachers can't be trusted with guns. And he starts, like he gives examples of certain stuff teachers have done. And I'm like, wait a minute, if you can't teach it, if you can't trust teachers with guns, why are you trusting them with your children? As always, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me, feel free to give me a thumbs down. But state why in the comment section you disagree with me. And I'll respond to it either in the comment section, comment section or a future video. Be safe out there.